Hi guys, my name is Dan Cannon, and uh, I wanted to do a little bit of an LSDJ tutorial on some of the tricks I used in my latest track. It's called Gorlax. I actually recorded guitar on top of it, but I kind of wanted to break down some of the tricks that I used. Um, so it's going to be kind of for advanced users, and I'll skip over some of the very basics. So if you're if you have questions feel free to ask me but uh, i'm going to skip over a couple things and uh, hopefully those of you who are somewhat familiar with lsdj might pick up a trick or two and some of you also might think that i do things really stupidly so whatever um i'll show you just a little bit this uh right here i start off kind of with a hi-hat and what i've done here is i've humanized the drums which means that you know, instead of a very steady, um, robotic sound, what I did is I used the envelope tool in order to create, um, kind of a more humanized feel. So if I get rid of these here, you'll see that it sounds very, I don't know, not interesting. But if I go and, and put this in here on every other one, it kind of has a much more human feel to it. Like someone's actually playing it. So anyways, um, I got that trick from, I've been programming drums for a very long time and uh, getting them to sound human and realistic so that the listener doesn't know that they're programmed drums is kind of um, important when you're doing that. And once you get good at it, you know, you can fool anyone, even real drummers. And uh, I'm actually just applying the exact same idea that I use from that into this. So humanizing things is, is fun. You can, you can actually um, put a lot of expressions in LSDJ that you wouldn't know what you would do. So anyways, I'm going to go into the first part here, which is... Uh, <laughs> I use kind of some weird chords um, based on kind of like some jazzier chords. And uh, it was kind of difficult to, uh, you know, with all the limited number of channels, get all the notes that I wanted because it kind of messed with, a, it's a chord with a lot of accidentals and bullshit notes in there. So, you know, for the wave channel, what I did is. What I did is I used a table to create um, some notes in there. So it looks like it's a root and a seventh um, with the wave channel, which sounds like I'm kind of using kind of like a, a triangle wave in there. Um, and I used single channel echo by using the envelope thing. So it sounds like it's echoing right now, but it actually is just a single channel. Um, I stole that from Joey Mariano on this... Uh, tutorial that I saw him do. Now on these, I also do um, single channel echo on my pulse wave channel. Now what you'll notice is um, it's only in the left channel right now. And uh, what I, so I have that instrument set up to only go in the left channel. And uh, you also notice that I get kind of an interesting sound because um, I modulate the uh, the waveform a little bit in my table, and then I also use a vibrato command. You're going to notice that I use a lot of vibrato commands in order to create a more interesting sound. Um, so let's listen to it. Okay, now without it, it sounds like it's a lot, it's a lot less interesting. Um, so gives it that little bit of warble. Um, and so I use that on both that on this channel and also on the other Pulse Wave channel, which takes up the right hand portion. And by doing that is I get a very wide stereo field by having the left and right. Um, and they have single channel echo on there. So you get this echo feel. And it kind of has this very spacey, wide feel. Um, I try to keep a very interesting stereo feel at all times. It's just very interesting for the listener. So this is what it sounds like all together. It 
again, I also play with envelopes a lot in order to create a, um, I don't know, uh, an interesting sound as opposed to a very robotic. Um, the next section is actually, um, I use the single channel echo again, but what I do is I actually echo it again with single channel echo. I echo the echo with the other channel. So what I do is it sounds like this. So, you know, you'll have the note um, G5, um, instrument 3, which is to the left. Um, G sharp 5, I'm sorry. And then you have G sharp 5 over here, which is two ticks later. And what that does, um, it echoes what's going on here, and you get this very wide sound um, that echoes itself. Uh, it's, it's very interesting. So. And then I have the bass channel arpeggiating the rest of the chord, which is kind of like a, a D and an A. So anyways, um, I use this as a basis for soloing over during, uh, during the actual track. I'll show you that later. I do a guitar solo over it. Uh, this is very much influenced by uh, Frederick Zordenthal's Special Defects, if any of you are familiar with that album. Try to go for the same sort of feel as he used in that, which is kind of like this uh, jazzy, uh, diminished half hole sort of thing. Um, he uses a lot of that, so, and that was kind of like my direct influence. It's actually based on a like a live instrument recording that I did. But anyways, um, the next it kind of goes through this whole build up section, and uh, the next build up section is. <laughs> Now going through that, um, I have my bass drums finally make an appearance, which um, I just use a table to pitch bend down very quickly. And uh, I kill it right here so it never goes past a certain point. I actually use a subwoofer in order to get the lowest possible note before it wraps around to the top. Um, if you know that the P function will just wrap around to like the highest possible note once it hits the C3 that it's that's the lowest note. So I actually use a subwoofer to find that. You can actually just hear it too, but um, by hearing when it wraps around, but I like using the sub. Anyways, uh, came up with a nice fat little synth. Um, um, I think it's a sine wave. Um, uh, I'm sorry, it's a square wave with a very quick notch and then a, a low notch. Um, and what that does is it gives it kind of this high, uh, I don't know, like bite and growl to it. Um, and then... That part right there, I used an instrument. And I put a table on it. Again, I used a vibrato command to make it more interesting. So listen to this. And then if you go to C5, I think it was that. And what I did is I put um, octaves on top of here. And so this top octave here. But if I throw the octave on top, it's much more interesting. So I modulate the waveform and the octave in order to get a very specific sound. It's all about creating an interesting soundscape. Um, this channel right here, you'll notice I use some left right panning, um, and I think that'll be in the table. So I also use envelopes to like kind of make it fade in and out very interestingly. So if you notice the um, the table here, the arpeggio goes at a different rate. I use the H command to make it go at a different rate than the actual uh, uh, the actual 
what's it called, uh, left-right panning. I wanted the left-right panning to go to a different, um, I don't know, number of cycles per thing, so. So it kind of gets this nice cross modulation effect. Um, and this left right panning, it actually gives a super interesting stereo field when you're listening to it. It's like the, it's surrounding you. Um, and I love using stuff like that. The only problem is, is uh, not on emulators, but on uh, the original Game Boy, which I use exclusively. I rarely use the right emulator. Um, there's a little bit of audible clicking that occurs. And uh, that's really unavoidable on the Game Boy. It's like a hardware flaw or something when you do fast left-right panning. Um, but if you use it like in the context of when there's other stuff going on, you don't really notice it. So it's not really a big, big deal. But if I had that track soloed like this, you would hear all this clicking and it would, it's, I don't know, I've had problems where I've had to rearrange things because of it. Um, but I do love a wide stereo field. It's very important to me. Um, so anyways, that part. Now, with me, I tend to run out of patterns. Um, I run out of phrases, actually, because I do a lot of solos. Not necessarily in this song, but I run out of patterns a lot. So, what I do is try to economize whenever possible. So for this, it's actually the same patterns, 26 and 27. Um, but I use a transpose up to an octave to give it a different feel. I could alternatively just come up with new phrases, but that's just wasting more phrases that I don't have to. So this is the same thing, just up an octave. And when I can do that, I'll try to do that and just in order to save patterns, because otherwise I'll run out very quickly. So anyways, that builds up. Alright, on this section, um, I come up with a lot of effects. It's very inspired by glitchy industrial stuff. I tried to really just maximize what noises I could get out of the Game Boy. Um, first, I guess I'll go over the drums, and the drums have some left-right panning in them as well, um, which by themselves sounds really weird, but um, in the context of things, it just gives, I don't know, a very swirling effect, like all stuff is happening all over the place. So with this, it, it go, um, I use different instruments to go left and right, and then my snare drum actually makes an appearance, which is a bunch of transpositions and shape changes. Um, I also use a left-right pan on it, which gives it a little bit of, I don't know, watt width, which is weird, but it works. So anyway... So anyways, there's the left-right panning on the drums, and then on, uh, on the wave channel, I guess I'll start with that. Um, actually, I'll start with pulse wave too. And what I did is... It's just a little pulse wave bass drum right here, which is just a pitch bend down. And actually, there is a bass drum on my wave channel as well, so it's really just solidifying the bass drum um, on that 4-4, four, 4-on-the-floor four, four beat sort of thing. So, what I did for this um, is kind of complicated, but I have a lot of noises coming on the same channel, so... Let me break some of that down for you. So I have my bass drum, which is instrument zero here, and you'll notice that I have kill commands on them. And what that does is it has a very sh sharp sound. If I didn't use the kill commands, um, they would, I don't know, they go, they kind of bleed into each other a bit. But if I use the kill command, they stand out a lot more. So, um, I don't know, I, I end up using a lot of kill commands if I end up using bass drums together. And now I also change the note of the bass drum, and it ends up becoming like a... Oops, hit the camera a little bit. Um, kind of almost like a tom sound going down. Oh, screensaver. <laughs> what the fuck? So, here we go. Um, I use a lot of pitch bends with instruments. 
And that's actually that sound that the wow, that's actually the pitch bend wrapping back around. I'm sure a lot of you guys have found that sound by accident. Um, and I like to change the value to, you know, come up with it, make that wrap around happen in an interesting uh, timing position. So, yeah, I do a lot of stuff with left, right, too, just to keep a, like, a stereo field going on. And then the next measure... This right here is actually um, an instrument that I created, which is... It's got a ton of vibrato on it to the point where you can't even get a note out of it. And, I don't know, it almost sounds like a splattering sound. And it's got a, a little bit of pitch bending going down, a little bit of left right going on. Um, but the vibrato is mostly what's making that note. And I think I just make it drop down like three octaves there. So it just goes... So that's that OE instrument. And it's just another interesting noise I got from playing around. And you'll notice I use more kill commands here on my bass drum. So... Since my bass drum is dropping in pitch, if I use a kick, uh, kill command and use different uh, numbers on it, it sounds like that I'm actually changing the drum that I'm hitting, like it's a higher and then lower. So, and then the next measure, and then I got that, that little trill by actually putting a chord on my kick drum. Oh, no. And then I did the same thing over here, um, but I used a lower octave of my kick drum. So you can actually start your kick drum note from a, a, a higher note. And then I put a chord, which alternates between three notes really fast, and it just comes up with wacky noises. Sometimes it's just fun to play with that. And that's a, just an instrument I put with a little pitch bend down on it. But... And then this over here. That, uh, that right there is a pitch bend that keeps wrapping around, and for some reason, magically, after, you know, four ticks later, it, like, changes timbre, and it's just, sometimes you have some ha happy accidents when you're programming, and you're like, oh, that's pretty cool, all right. Um, but I try to make everything pretty rhythmic when I do it. And then there's actually another set that I'll go through here. And this is, again, changing the octave on my kick drum and also my kill command, so it just sounds like toms rolling down. Um, that little right there, that's, um, again, playing with the vibrato function way past what any usable amount. It ends up just becoming a noise effect, and I just go up th three octaves there, so that just sounds like da 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 and they're not really notes anymore, they're just like interesting sounding effects. And it's all about coming up with an interesting sound, it's just sound design. Those are like Mega Man drops. Um, it's almost like a triangle way of dropping down real quick, and I just used it as like a... I don't know, almost like a Tom effect. <laughs> That's almost like an elephant effect again with the vibrato and a pitch bend down. Um, using, if you use the L command in a place where there isn't any note, it just drops it down. And, I don't know, I definitely play with the vibrato function a whole lot in this, uh, this song, so. So, I don't know, playing with the uh, first value changes the, uh, I forget, first digit is the speed, and the second one is the, how much vibrato it actually does, so, like, how, how much up and down motion it does, and when you go way off the charts, the note becomes less and less, uh, recognizable, but it's very, I don't know, I was able to create some really interesting sounding stuff from that. 
So I ended up using the retrigger command, um, and that just kind of came up with something interesting sounding. Uh, what this does is it retriggers the same note four ticks later, and there's actually six ticks in between every single one of those um, zero, one, two, three, four. There's six ticks in between each one on the table command. Um, and so it's actually retriggering it, I don't know, four ticks later. So. And then these are just uh, the chord command, which I don't know, a lot of people don't like to use very much, but uh, it has its use for just instead of using a table. The tables are actually limited. I've uh, definitely run into tracks where I've run out of tables. Because um, I think you only go up to like 1F or something in hex. And um, I just came up with a diminished chord. So yeah, I go up a minor third, and it's the same thing. Diminished is nice as parallel. And then. Um, I don't know, I did some pitch where it pitches down and then up, or up then down, I forget which. Oh um, uh, yeah, up then down. And, uh, and it gets a woo. That's probably my favorite sound of the entire song. It's like almost like saying like, whoa! Um, that's just crazy vibrato um, and a pitch bend. And, uh, I don't know, the vibrato depth is really high, or the speed is also pretty high, but not as fast as it can go. Um, I don't know, it's it's just so perfect. So I'm really proud of that one from a sound design perspective. But anyways, you put it all together and you get, you know, kind of a dancey groove with effects going on all over the place. And it's really only using two channels. I have the bass drum bumped up, but... cool thing about um, coming up with a lot of effects over one single channel is it stays very interesting and then you have still have room for the other channel so like a lot of times I'll try to come up with something cool using a single channel and then I have the other two channels to like add on top of that um, so anyways with this you know I use the kill command to make it sound very staccato um, otherwise it's difficult to get um, that sort of sound, but... So that's going on, it just kind of gives it like, oh, there's notes going on now. This is really kind of a build-up part. I maintained the bass drum um, on this channel, but I inserted things in between all of them. Um, and as you'll notice, I use different instruments, and each instrument is uh, a left and right bass. So 17 is going to be on your right on the output, and then 18 is going to be on the left. And what it does is just creates another stereo field. And I also used vibrato um, to create a thicker sound. So. And that vibrato just makes it sound warbly and cool. So again, one thing I wanted to show you is that snare roll at the end. You know, it's like a snare drum roll. What I did is, A, I use kill commands so that there's a little bit of space in between each hit and it helps separate each one so you hear it better, otherwise they kind of bleed together and just sound like a wall of noise. Also what I did is I used different octaves of that snare hit and uh, what it does is it kind of humanizes it because some of them are louder than others, so it'll be... And it just helps it stick out a little bit more. Um, it's something I wanted to be obvious. So anyways, it goes into the next section. Okay, as 
as you can tell, I did another kind of effect type section over the old bass line, the and uh, which is on the wave channel. But I did uh, this time I did it on one of the pulse wave channels, the effects. So that almost sounds like a Mega Man effect. Like wouldn't that almost sounds like exactly like when you shoot uh, a bullet in Mega Man? But uh, that first one. Which is just a uh, uh, an S command. I forget what that even does on this channel. <laughs> See, I'm not an expert and with a pitch bend. And then, uh, I don't know, lots of other stuff going on. <laughs> Look at this. Look at all the crap going on. I have no idea. There's left and right, so there's re-triggerings. Um, this 1D here with this re-trigger 1... Um, this actually has a kill command after the very first tick. And so what it does is it makes it very staccato, it sounds like. If I remove this, uh, these, these R1s, these re-trigger re commands, they'll just sound like pop up. So anyways, when I use the re-trigger of one, which re-triggers every one's tick in between each, you know, one, two, three, four on here. Um, it sounds, it has a very So, um, I don't know, that's another effect that I kind of exploit later, um, a bit, but we'll go through this a little bit more. Okay, so this right here, there's all sorts of stuff going on with this one note. There, first off, there's a chord going. It's um, and what it is is it's one semitone and two semitones. So it ends up turning into a pile of noise because it's three notes that are right next to each other, being uh, that are alternating. So you hear, uh, um, and then I pitch bend the shit out of it, and then uh, and then I pitch bend it differently again for some reason. I forget why I did that, but then I also modulate the waveform of it between the 15, 75, 50, or whatever, um, while it's pitch bending, so it ends up sounding like, I don't know, gurgling water or something. Again, you'll see that I used uh, the re-triggering with the single note of the 1D, which is that single tick version, and uh, that one I did as triplets, I want to say. And I also modulated them left and right just for interesting. Oh, the first one's triplets, the second one is not triplets, but... And uh, it's all about just creating an interesting landscape, so to speak. This one I stole from uh, Zen Albatross's Ruffians, I think, which is just some pitch bends coming down. Uh, they, I just think I descend in like octaves, you know, D5, D6, D sharp, 5. Um, This one's cool because it sounds like waves, and I use, what I did is with the pitch bend is I tuned the value so it would be like dotted quarter notes, and I actually let it continue on to the next measure. I just let it go, and so what it does is it goes, and uh, it kind of plays against the beat. And again, with this D6 here, you see I have the max value of the uh, vibrato. Um, for all of these, and what it does is it just sounds like, seriously, a buzz. And, uh, the Max Vibrato seriously sounds like a buzz, and I put a little kill commands in there, and pitch bends and stuff, just to keep it interesting. But, uh, that's pretty much it for this part, um, and I just kind of have that going over this one bass line. Now this is cool, I was very proud of this. Um, I used that single tick instrument that I talked about earlier, the 1D. And then I played with the re-triggers and I kind of put, um, kind of like came like a, dr almost, it's almost like a drum roll, but it sounds like Morse code or whatever. What I did is I played against the beat, we're doing almost like this uh, motorcycle engine or kind of inspired by um, the song Bleed by Meshuga. Uh But what I did with this is,
you'll notice here that I use triplets, which is the R3, what it does is every three um, ticks. And, and um, what's cool is uh, I, I use that into my advantage. Um, at the end of the section, you'll notice that it breaks out into triplets, and it's almost like a metric modulator. It sounds like it's slowing down, but it's actually not. It's still in 4-4, four, four, just accenting the triplets. So listen to this part. It almost sounds like an instrument, like, breaking down. Um, so, what I did here is you'll see I used the same pattern, but I transposed it, and I used that to save patterns, and it also came up with an interesting, almost whole tone feel to it. Um, at least I think it's whole tone. So anyways, um, for this, um, Um, for the bass drum, as, as opposed to being on beats one and two, on quarter notes, dun dun, it'll be dun dun. Um, and I use the delay function on four ticks later, and it has a triplet feel to it. Um, and then with this instrument here, um, I also used a, um, a tr what I do is I have it ping pong between two different, um, two different things. It's going to be 80 and then 81. So these two waveforms that I drew in, and what it does is they're different, and some of them cut through better than others. Um, and I, what I did is I made the speed 5, and for whatever reason, the speed 5 sounds like... So da-da-da-da-da-da. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5. So that almost has a triplet feel. I don't even know if that is actually a triplet feel, but it definitely sounds like a slowdown, like it's breaking down. And I also pi uh, had the pitch go down, and so then it sounds even more like it's dying or something. Alright, so that's in there. And then what I did with the next part is, well... With the drums, I also had to make them go into triplet feel, which I used during delay commands, uh, which can be kind of a pain in the ass, um, and especially and you almost have to do guesswork in order to figure it out. But this is triplet feel, and uh, actually, like you're like, oh, that's six eight, but it's actually four four. I'm just doing triplets over it, and I did that using these delay commands. So, um, anyways, after that part, I, think I call that the breakdown part. Um, there's a wacky thing that this does. I'll let you listen to it. So anyways, what I did with that is I ch kept changing the instrument on it. it are, I'm sorry, I did a couple of pitch bends with it first. So this is actually the um, the uh, synth before the da 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 da. So, anyways, what I do is I just let that keep ringing out um, the next measure out, and I play with the pitch bends a little bit, so it goes up a little bit, and then I have it go back down, so it goes da 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 da. Um, and then what I do is I change the instrument. And what I do is I actually keep the exact same ping pong between those two synths, but I change the speed in which they ping pong back and forth. So it actually sounds like it's speeding up as it goes up. And then um, when I pitch bend it back down again, I switch the instrument again, and I change the speed again. Um, but it's still the same synth that I'm alternating between those two. And uh, what it does is it has this very interesting feel. I have to let it play from the last measure before, but... Ah. And then you'll see what I'm talking about. So 
it has that speeding up feel once it gets to the uh, faster speed. Um, and I kind of just ramp that up. It's kind of a, it's a fun effect. And uh, I've only begun to start playing with stuff like that, but uh, you can get really crazy with uh, wave channel modulation once you get into it. So anyways, um, the next part is just... Uh, just kind of a groove and uh, there's only one thing I really want to point out um, well two things at the very end of it there's a uh, another of uh, those vibratos that just sounds cool and that vibrato just gives it that wah at the end it just makes it really huge sounding and I like it now um, here's the thing, is I have this arpeggio that I'm doing, it goes da 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 Anyways, I also have a bass drum in there, which is, which is going to be the zero zero instrument here. And, um, what I'm doing is I'm actually leaving out the notes that would be in there, and I'm just playing the bass drum instead. And, um, because it's, since it's a polyrhythm, it's kind of falling on a different spot every time. But the thing is, is your brain fills in the notes that should be there. So... So like this sh should be an F4 right here, but I just put a bass drum there instead, and your brain doesn't really care. Um, like there's a bass drum right in the middle of this too. And it should be, you know, a G sharp, but it doesn't matter. Your brain doesn't really care. And that's sort of some of the audio illusions that you can get away with. Um, and also, I have this actually doubled on this channel. It gives it a much growlier feel with the paw. That's actually playing some of the missing notes I actually left in this one because it's on a rest. Um, and why not? Same thing with those two right there. Um, this instrument zero. It's actually the same instruments as the wave channel. I'm actually using the wrong instrument on the wrong channel. But, um... What it does is just adds a little bit of growl to it, so. You'll notice I also did some left-right panning on the drums. It's probably actually the same drum pattern as earlier. And it just keeps that stereo field going. Anyways, it comes in with uh, the next part. that part there I kind of want to explain to you a little bit it appears that I have transposed it up an octave and the chances are that I decided that I liked it better at that octave range than what I had originally programmed it at so instead of changing all the notes I just transposed it all up anyways with this what I did is first off it's alternating between two notes I think it pedals on uh, D um, which is always going to be on the right so I change the output of this instrument to C to right, and then to D is on the left. So again, you have a stereo field thing going on. And it's alternating between the two. Um, so it goes A, 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 A sharp, A sharp, and they're still always pedaling on the D, and then G sharp. Anyways, what I did, did to keep it interesting is I modulated the waveform in a pattern different. It's actually a six-note pattern. Um, before it gets back to this first one here. So it's, I got the 75% waveform and 75% waveform, 75% waveform. Anyways, what I did is when I went down is I kept that pattern going throughout the measures. So um, certain waveforms stick out more than others, particularly the 50% wave. So you end up getting this modulation that goes in a uh, in time against the regular time. So... Um, it's kind of a polyrhythm of the waveform modulation, and it just kind of has this interesting sound to it, um, just to keep it interesting. It also has left-right panning, and um, I betcha I even put a table. No, I didn't. No, oh, okay. So, um, yeah, that's happening during that. It was just another way I kept it interesting by modulating the waveform and the stereo field and all sorts of stuff. So anyways, 
the next track comes in. And uh, I actually remove the channel that was playing, which was kind of my support to the bass line. But it doesn't really matter because the bass line was kind of the big part of it. That was just kind of a support, and I'm removing it for a lead, and your brain doesn't really notice because the lead takes precedence. So anyways, this lead, uh, what I did is I tried to... I actually used a low attack. The envelope is actually 5D, and usually around A is an even start. And so it kind of fades in a little bit, almost like a violin would. And um, I do some bends. So like with this, I bend up a half step using the L command, the legato. And then I add some vibrato. And the vibrato isn't right away. Sometimes I add the vibrato a little bit later, like you would, like you're playing an instrument. Um, and uh, I, I tend to use a lot of bends like this. Uh, D is actually going to slide to a G uh, again and then go into a vibrato, and then I also slide down to this F here. Um, and uh, actually, the uh, vibrato will sustain through this F, I think, because um, I did not put an instrument here. So there's lots of... I actually did some very minor humanization compared to what I usually do here, but uh, that's all it really needed. So what it sounds like... Sounds like a violin is playing it, and that's kind of the sound I was going for. Um, if I were to just put those notes there, it would sound much more boring. Um, but using the slides and the vibrato and the change in attacks and stuff like that, um, by the uh, by having the default envelope command, I don't know, um, it just makes it a whole lot more interesting and more human sounding. And sometimes I want to sound like a robot, like with those effect sections, and other times I want to sound human, and I think just, you know, mixing those in. Um, really uh, kind of adds interestingness to it, so. Yeah. Alright, that part there, I managed to come up with something very huge. And I did that by, uh, first off, I'm channel sharing with the bass drum here. And while well, I'm using the vibrato, I, again, as an instrument modifier to make it very huge sounding. So, it, um, still manages to have, like, note character, which, uh, but it has a much huger, like, ultra fast warble to it. it almost gives it like a chorus sound and since I liked it so much um, I actually came up with alternate versions to use on the other tracks the other two pulse wave just double it up and sound fucking huger you also notice I did a right pan on it and Again, that's just to create that wide stereo feel and just sound like it's coming from you from all sides. And this one will have the left side pan. And uh, you notice I have a really chintzy bass drum sound, but it's just really um, accenting the real bass drum sound. And uh, all together, it just sounds really huge. I'm really just going to show you one last thing, and that's going to be this uh, this uh, fill that I came up with in between that little rest there. And it's, uh, let's see, where is it? There it is. It's in 76 here. So what it is, is uh, I created an instrument, and I use this OE table that has that kill command, which is right after the first tick. So it has a very staccato sound. And I use re-triggers, and then I also change the octave of the instrument. So it has this almost like uh, fading in, fading in like super fast roll that happens. So and um, and it's not actually fading in, but it 
kind of sounds like it because the octaves are changing so it's almost like i don't know it sounds like it's modulating but it's not um a lot of lsdj is just like coming up with effects manually you have to almost i mean sometimes you get lucky um by just poking around i know i've gotten well, half of this track is just getting lucky poking around the other half are very conscious decisions and recreating effects manually uh doing whatever so anyways the retrigger command is pretty cool uh for doing stuff like that so and uh yeah that's my tip i hope you like it um this song is actually gonna be on my album i'm it was just coming out probably in June or July of 2011. Uh, my name is Danimal Cannon. Uh, I'm going to have, actually, the version of the song, which I'm going to be posting on 8-Bit Collective, it actually has guitar in it. I actually do a guitar solo over the first section. Um, I'm probably going to show that after this. Um, and the rest of the guitar actually just kind of doubles the bass line. I'm not going to show that because it's kind of boring. But when I play the guitar solo, I'll show you guys that. Um, anyways, uh, check out my stuff. I'm on Facebook uh, at Danimal Cannon, and uh, I don't know. I'm, I also play in the band Arm Cannon and Weapon X. And uh, thanks for checking this out. Hopefully, you guys learned a little something here. Um, some of it was probably redundant for you. Other things you're like, oh, I never thought of doing that. Um, and some of this you might be like, oh, this is far too advanced for me, and I have no idea what you're talking about. Uh, don't worry about it. LSDJ is a really cool platform. I found. Uh, you just kind of have to really know your shit. You need to know your composition. You need to know um, your effects and your sound design. It's, I don't know, and once you learn all those sorts of things, you, it really kind of all comes together. I know plenty of guys who like say, oh, I don't know any theory, but they have a really good ear and you can get by like that. But um, definitely a creative mind it takes to come up with something. So anyways, uh, I'm going to probably play that solo soon, and I hope you guys check out my track on APC. I'm Dan Mulcahy. Thanks.